All right, hockey fans and hockey fanatics out there, welcome to the first episode of the Hockey Lounge. I'm your host, Nick, and let me tell you a little bit about how the lounge is going to go down. We're going to have weekly podcasts, weekly guests. We're going to be talking about hockey, hockey, and more hockey, NHL hockey, junior hockey. We're going to be talking about hockey in the lounge every podcast. Vic, Frank, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thanks for having me, brother. Awesome. Awesome. If you want to uh, be a member of the lounge, just hit the subscribe button or follow us on Instagram, the Hockey Lounge. So let me tell you a little bit about the two guests tonight. Longtime friends of mine. Long time. I guess we're getting old, boys. (laughs) Over 20 years of of friendships. What's that? Yeah, maybe Maybe I am. For sure. Um, Vic is a longtime Flyers fan. Black and orange, 88, Eric Lindros, Rick Tockett. He asked me to say that name. But we all know Tockett's career in 92 with the black and gold, what he did with the Penguins. Frank, he's all giddy over there with that Leaf jersey or Leaf (laughs) t-shirt, Leaf hat. Look at him pumping that chest. Not sure if he has Leaf socks on or Leaf shorts because he's sitting down. He might even have leaf underwear on. I'm not sure, but we don't want to see that. Okay, so a little bit about the lounge tonight, gents, and everybody out there. We're going to be talking about the Maple Leafs. Are they cup contenders? Are they pretenders? We're going to be talking about the NHL season that was. McDavid, Matthews. We're going to be talking about what happened in Philadelphia this year. They were supposed to be cup contenders. They were supposed to run the East. No round of 16, no playoffs this year. So we'll talk to Vic and get his thoughts on what happened to the Philadelphia Flyers. And my favorite part of the show tonight will be our NHL Stanley Cup predictions. Who will host the Cup in 2021, this pandemic COVID year? So, gents, let's start the lounge up. The lounge is officially open. Again, if you want to become a lounge member please hit the subscribe button or follow us on Instagram, the hockey lounge. So gents first topic of the night. And I know Frank was shaking his head already about the Leafs. So I'm going to throw this out to you guys, gents are the Leafs for real. Are they cup contenders? Are they pretenders? Will Mitch Marner, Austin Matthews, Nylander show up in the first round of the playoffs? Who's in net? Who's the starting goalie for the Toronto Maple Leafs? Is it Anderson? Is it Soupy Campbell? Is it David Riddick? Or we both know a goalie we used to play men's hockey with a long time ago. He lives in Newmarket, Ontario. (laughs) He has a temper. Is he waiting for the call to become the Leafs goalie this year? Or Frank, are you going to dial 911 for rent a goalie? Gents, I'm going to throw this over to Vic tonight. First off, Vic, your thoughts on the Leafs. Are they pretenders or contenders? Uh, well, they're built to be a contender. Um, whether they can get out of the first round or not, uh, or kill those, uh, let's say, that it's in their heads, you know, that getting that, getting that first round out of their heads. Uh, if they can get by that, I think, I think they should go by Montreal. Um, goaltending is a question, of course, for me, I don't think, um, I don't think Campbell's the answer. And then you have Anderson who's coming back what first game tonight, I believe. Yes, sir. So it's, it's all going to depend on how he, uh, how he fares. They're, their defense, you know, I don't, I don't believe in their defense. So, in terms of, in terms of their defense, do you think they're deep enough? Do you think they made enough moves um, at the trade deadline to bolster up their top six? They're depending on a player like Justin Hall to carry, uh, you know, fifteen to eighteen minutes a night. Um, what are your thoughts on, on again, the defensive core, Frank? I know you're chopping at the bit. You're <laughs> smiling there. You're shaking your head. But Vic, let me ask you, do you, you being a defenseman, and actually the funny thing about it uh, for all the viewers tonight, 
when we used to play men's league hockey together, these two gems on the show tonight were defensive partners. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, Vic, do you think they have enough depth uh, on the blue line this year? No, and that's why I think uh, they're going to run into their problems. Uh, they may, you know, it's yeah, it's fine and dandy to score teams uh, in the regular season. You know, winning games 5-1, 6-1, you know, scoring six, seven goals a game. We all know come playoff time, yeah, you may, you may get a couple of games where that happens. Uh, a team like Montreal, I don't think um, – can shut them down, but um, when it comes to it, it all starts the back end, right? Back end out, and I, I just don't think they have the depth back there. And you know, if teams, if a good, if they hit a good team that shuts down their top two lines, you know, I think they they're in trouble. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, when it comes to scoring, we all know the Leafs can put the puck in the net. The obvious question is, can they keep the puck out of the net for the Stanley Cup playoffs coming up? Frank, you're shaking your head there. You yeah. went back and forth like a bobblehead. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Batman. Is it Batman? <laughs> <laughs> um, I know you're disagreeing with everything Vic said, but... Uh, 100%. 100%. So you say 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. Wow. We got a wow. We got 100% here. So why why do you think the Leafs are for real? Why do you think they're going to contend in the 2021 playoffs? You got to do what's going to win you games, right? So at the end of the day, yes. Uh, goaltending, am I worried? Ah, slightly. Um, I believe the first round – with Montreal, um, you put Campbell in that. Okay. Um, so, so why why would you put Campbell in that? I don't and think I don't think Anderson. I mean, he's missed quite a few games right now. He needs some time. So I am right now. He's playing against Ottawa. I'm sure they're going to throw him in against the, the last game with Winnipeg, right? Um, I would give the starting uh, netminder to Campbell. Okay, um, so, so so let's talk about Campbell for one second. There, yeah, he went on that great ride there for about ten games. Vic and That's I were right. talking. Yeah, Vic and I were talking about this uh, before the show uh, this afternoon, and you know he was on such a great ride there, and then all of a sudden he had a couple poor performances right after that. And um, you still have faith that Campbell can still take you through that first round. Because let me remind you yep. who will be in the other net in game one with Montreal. And that's exactly. Carey Price. So, yeah. Frank, again, you know, you have faith in Campbell. Yeah, I, I do have faith in Campbell. Why? Uh, I, again, I'm going to have to disagree with Vic's point of view with the defense. Um, when it comes down to defensive, uh, the defensive game play of the Leafs, um, don't forget the last few games we had Sandine. And Sandine yeah. is a key part of the Leafs' success in the playoffs, in my opinion. Okay. okay? Um, you got to throw him back in. Yeah, he's not playing because of cap issues right now, right? But uh, I don't see a problem with the with with the defense, right? As well as the uh, you know the forwards right now because uh, for me, yeah. um, being uh, uh, playing up front is yeah. not a problem. We could score. Obviously, we can score. Okay, Vic, so first of all, so, you know, Vic. So right, forty. Yeah. What what, what do you have that yeah. for? What's that for? Yeah. Come on, Vic. Answer that. Uh, you tell me. <laughs> What's the sign for number forty? Who forty? Austin Matthews. Okay, yes, sir. So so we're gonna get to that, guys. Forty Austin. Okay. Matthews. Well, that'll be it means something. Show. It does mean something. We'll we'll get okay. to that in a sec, there, Frank. But let's. I want to talk about uh, J.K. Shaw. Thanks for coming on the lounge tonight, or in the lounge. Appreciate you sending a comment our way here. He's saying Habs are four, 
and out. We'll get to 100%. our playoff. We'll get to our playoff predictions in in a little bit here. But thank you for uh, watching. We have the Tipu family. Price wants out of that dump in Montreal. I would probably agree with you, Teeps, on that one. Um, but let's get back to the Leafs here. So you talked about their offense, Vic. We know in the Stanley Cup playoffs, everything changes. You know, it gets harder. It's a marathon. Um, every hit counts. Every hit hurts. It's more of an aggressive game. The referees let way more go in the Stanley Cup playoffs. This the question I have for you, Vic, and for Frank, is that Mitch Marner, uh, Nylander, these two guys seem to, when the playoffs start to get tougher, they phase out. Um, you talk about Nylander. He is a perimeter player. You know, he has that head and shoulders commercial coming up in his next promo probably. He's got some silky hair there. But but that being said, w guys, what are your thoughts here with, you know, we saw what happened with Columbus last year in the bubble. And, uh, you know, high expectations for the Leafs. Leaf Nation is expecting a win in the first round. They're expecting them to come out of the Jabroni division, which I call it. Um and the reason why I call it the Jabroni division is because, you know what? You're playing some Jabroni teams there. Anyways, that being said, your thoughts, guys, on the offense. Can the offense produce like it is right now with the freewheeling? Vic, what are your thoughts? Well, like I said, yeah, you can you can outscore teams as much as you want in the regular season. It comes out the playoffs. You know what happens. Defense, defense uh, is first, right? Uh, Weber's back. Weber plays a hard game. You know, you talk about Marner in the playoffs. I think the one reason that he phases out in the playoffs because is the physical, the physicality, right? You start bumping him around. You start bumping Nylander around. Uh, you, you might be looking at a different story. Like, listen, Montreal's not going to be a pushover. No. You know, they got they got some veterans. They got some like, they got guys like Gallagher coming back, too, who's going to get in there and, uh, you know, cause shit, too. Mm -hmm. Right? He's going to get in the, on that defense. Um Carey Price, there's the X factor. Yeah, he'll steal. He can steal a series himself. Like, listen, Flyers last year against Montreal, I thought it was gonna be a cakewalk. Mm -hmm. Wasn't the case. You know, Carey Price was standing on his head. Um, their physical presence on the back end um, made it tough. And to be honest, as a Flyer fan, I don't even think we should have got past them. Right. We were lucky to get past them. Right. So. The Leafs are. It's not going. I don't think it'll be four. No, like somebody said there, Mister Shazi. Yeah. Um. But like, listen, they should. They should get by them, no doubt. Mm -hmm. I just don't mm -hmm. think uh, you're going to see them scoring at will. For sure, for sure. So Frank, again, you mentioned the offense, offense, and and your thoughts yep. there. Your thoughts there with um, those three players, and I'm going to throw out a question to you, Frank, first before you yep. answer that as well. You know, they, they acquired some veterans in the beginning of the year. They got Jumbo Joe, Joe Thornton's in the lineup. Okay, they brought in Wayne Simmons from Scarborough, Ontario. Um, they made a couple of moves with, you know, bringing in Felino, another veteran guy. Um, <clears throat> so they brought in a few veterans. Um, you know, they brought in on the back end, Bogosian. Okay, he just came up off a of Stanley Cup. So they have some veteran leadership there. So your thoughts on uh, the offense Will it be able to be freewheeling like it is right now in the regular season and the veteran leadership they brought in? And I'm just going to make one point after that. Frank, your thoughts on the leadership and the scoring depth the Leafs have this year? 100%. So um, when it comes down to the offense, uh, I think uh, Kyle Dubas uh, and management uh, did really well picking up these veteran guys because of the fact that they know deep down inside what happened last year. Right. Mm -hmm. So picking up Simmons, right. Uh, will not, um, how do you say, I guess not pressure Marner or Nylander relieve some pressure for these guys. Um, I'll be honest with you. Spezza signing Spezza again for seven was seven hundred thousand yeah. best money that can buy right now. Okay, this yeah. guy I have to more so focus on the leader or, or on the veterans I should say Nick and Vic yeah. because yeah. these guys here uh, are going to win you games, right? Never yeah. mind when it comes down 
right? In my opinion, the Leafs, four straight against Montreal. You're going to weave in Anderson in the second round, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's what I'm thinking. I think uh, Keith is going to be doing the same thing, right? Because of the of the flexibility we have with these veteran guys. I know you focused your question when originally was with Nylander and Marner. Yeah, I think yeah. our coaching staff will say, "Hey, you know what? Let them be. It's these guys." They're actually going to have to take over the leadership, right? The Simmons, the yep. Thorntons, the Spezas. And these guys will win, in my opinion, they will win you games in the playoffs. Okay, so I then. Think, I still think you got to go with your, your veteran to start. I think Anderson needs to get the starts. Yeah, yeah. you know, uh, you know the, the only thing I challenge you on that, Vic, is that if you look at right now, Freddie Anderson, you know, he hasn't played He hasn't played in a little while. He's getting a couple of games under his belt. He Based hasn't won. How he does these few games, for sure. For sure. And then also, too, he hasn't won a playoff series ever in his yeah. career. So that that's worrisome to me if I'm a Leaf fan. Also, as well as his save percentage this year is at 897 with a 2.91 goals against average, which is very, very – that percentage is very low. If you look at Campbell uh, going in today, he's got a 2.11 – uh, goals against with a 923 save percentage. I think either guy right now is a gamble. Um, I, you know, I, I think, you know, if I'm a Leaf fan or part of Leafs Nation, goaltending is my biggest worry. Um, and one point when I think about the leadership on the team, I think you got some really savvy leadership on the Leafs. But the question or the answer I will tell Leaf Nation right now, and they're probably not going to like it, is if you look at Jumbo Joe, if you look at Wayne Simmons, if you look at Felino. OK, if you look at Jason Spezza, what do they all have in common? Hmm. I don't H. want to answer that. Vic? H. <laughs> no. Well, I haven't Frank? won a cup. Right. They haven't won a cup. So, again, you can get all the veteran leadership you want. But I think that room, they have amazing young talent. I'm not going to say anything bad about Marner, Nylander, or Matthews. They are great hockey players. But when you need to go for a long stretch run, you need veteran leadership. You need Stanley Cup leadership. You know, Jumbo Joe, he was in the 2016 Stanley Cup Finals against Pittsburgh. He's been to the show. Like I said, you added Bogosian, so that's great. He's won a ring. He was a six-man D, okay? But, again, I'm not sure there. Uh, we got here. Cassie Campbell, yeah, smoke show. Smoke show. Did you see did you see Cassie Campbell tonight on Hockey Night in Canada? She had the uh, shoulder pads like the 1980 ladies. I don't she know looks if she's like right. she's, she looks like she's 60. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, been around so, the block <laughs> a couple of times. Yeah. What 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 block, Vic? What block <laughs> is that? Right. Okay. She was like the town bicycle buddy. Right. Who who's driving up to Oak Road Road Ridges tonight, Vic? Who's driving up? <laughs> so so, oh, but, Vic, uh, you know what? <laughs> Okay, you know what? At the end of the day, the Leafs, the Leafs have to win. Frank. No, no. The Leafs have to win. <laughs> the Leafs have to win. They got to come out of the North Division this year. But you're they right. That's the plan. They, that, that, yeah. they have to come out, right? The right. expectation, the minimum expectation here is to come out of the North, right? But Frank, who do you think? The expectation every year is the Stanley Cup parade. No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. No. Right. I mean, that's every every team's expectation. Vic, come on. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's your expectation, even if Philadelphia is not even in the playoffs. Okay. No. So, no. You know. You know what? You Philly fans. I'm not like. I'm not like about is this guy here? I'm not like. Hey, gritty, gritty, gritty. 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 Yeah. Hey, that's all you guys focus on. <laughs> <laughs> all right we're we're gonna we're gonna get to the snakes, buddy. We're, we're gonna get to the flyers so um no so, you gotta fire me up now eh? okay here we go here we go the, the, the lounge is getting heated up i like it i like it we got a couple of bevies here um you know we we used to uh you know talk about these hockey uh these hockey talks in the dress room uh, you know after a game we used to you know go to a local pub and have a few mm -hmm. pints uh, maybe sometimes too many pints. We used to, you know, get out of hand, maybe yell at a few customers that used to walk in the local pub. And that particular bartender used to say, guys, shut up. You're embarrassing us. Now, who would do that? Uh, I, hey. Not us. Not hey, us. Vic, 
Show yes. me those corks. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here we go. Vic, why don't you give uh, the viewers one of your famous lines when people used to walk into our local establishment. No. The sure. water down. You don't want to do that? Come on, man. Come on. You know, we no, got the, no. karate, the, the Karate Kid series happen out there. <laughs> come on. Let's let's hear one of those. No, 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 no. No? Okay. Maybe at the end of the show, we'll, we'll bring that up. Okay, Jen. So before we move on to the next topic in the lounge tonight, <clears throat> um, I'm going to just ask you guys. Vic, pretender or contender? Leafs. Uh, I'm going to say pretender. Pretender. Frank. You know what Frank's saying. We know what Frank's saying, right? Contender. I think I, Come on, the, guys. the Leafs are going right. to win the Stanley Cup, the Super Bowl, the Euro Cup, the World Cup. They're going to win everything. Everything, buddy. Yeah. I'm, I'm taking them all the way. <clears throat> okay, so Leafs take uh, so Frank's taking the Leafs all the way. So he's got to get off the show now, show now, because he just ruined his Stanley Cup prediction. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so the NHL season, yeah, Frank. Yeah, see you later. Um, the NHL season, uh, there are still a few games because of COVID and and the shortened season. A couple of teams are put on hold because of uh, positive COVID uh, tests out there and cases. Um, so. But let's talk about a couple of the highlights and individual performances um, this year. McDavid, just just incredible human highlight film every night. Him yeah. and Dreisaitl rocking the rocking the rinks. Vic, what are your thoughts on McDavid? Uh, just like you said, a human highlight reel. Yeah. Um, he's like. Uh, He's like when you're playing uh, NHL on Xbox <laughs> and you're playing against the AI and you put on expert level. Yeah. That's what he that's what he's like out there. <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, honestly, I know you're a okay, you're you're a Crosby fan. I'm not a big yeah. fan of Crosby, you know that. Yeah, yeah. I got Crosby, it. one of the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. I think McDavid will go down the most as the most dynamic player that we've we ever see. Right. I I definitely agree it. So Frank, your thoughts on 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 McDavid? What what are your thoughts on that? I know that you had you you showed that sign forty goals. Austin Matthews, 100%. he's a great player too. He's a great player too. But watching McDavid, what are your thoughts on on McDavid? Again, uh, he is a uh, always a higher highlight reel to watch mm -hmm. type of player. When you were watching highlights and they show him, he does stuff that's pretty incredible that's that's for sure right but the one thing i think in my mind is yep. when it comes down to the physicality of the game right right, right. i think uh, if you put matthews and mcdavid side by side I think I'm going to have to give it to Matthews. I'm not saying it because I'm a Leaf fan. I'm saying, yeah, it, because, <laughs> I, I'm saying it because it's proven, right? You're not, you're not going to – look at, look at McDavid. What, hey, McDavid going in – or I'm sorry, yeah. uh, Matthews yeah. going in in the corner, yeah, right? Man. You know, against Calgary, and he's going in hard, and you don't get – you know what? He doesn't give a damn about – but What's going to happen? And he takes a spill and he breaks his wrist. It's, right? But, Frank, McDavid doesn't have to go into corners. Well, you know what? But McDavid's too fast for the physical stuff. No, no, no. He's not too fast, Vic. Right? Maybe nope. he might be too fast for the, the, the North Division because if uh, <laughs> you're watching the same hockey I am, right? So it's a bad thing um, is what you're saying. I, I, I don't think he would do well against even Nashville. I'll be well, honest with you. Okay, right. so so let me let me put it, okay. So the physicality of the game, you think McDavid can't, you know, maybe the physicality of the game he's not able to put but, up with. One hundred percent. Who's but, who's he going to put? What Connor or uh, uh, these guys uh, in, the, er, in the defensive? Who who other than the Leafs? Yeah, there is no challenge for McDavid. Okay, so right. so let so let let's talk about McDavid in this in this form here. So. Great offensively, speed kills, wicked shot, um, great hockey IQ. But when you, when you look at uh, Connor McDavid and you look at his defensive play, 
Um, are, are you guys in agreement here that he still needs to refine his game in the defensive zone? Yeah, his overall game needs to needs to improve for him to be one of the all time greats for sure. Yeah. But he, he you can he makes up for it in every other aspect. You know, mm -hmm. you, you take away um, you take away just his assist this year. Yeah, I'm sorry, his goals. Yeah. He would still be second in the league in scoring. Yeah, it's 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 pretty insane, eh? You know what I mean? Yeah, he's, yeah. he's accounted for like I think it's almost sixty percent of the Oilers' production. That's crazy. Sixty percent of your team's points he's in on. Right, hundred percent. I agree right. with you guys, but again, like you guys said, this jabroni lead, uh, division, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know. So we all oh, Frank, know. Hold on. So hold on. You're so you're really not making a. Good case for the Leafs, then, if they're playing against that. No, no. Uh, you know what? <laughs> the, the Leafs could adapt to the other divisions, right? The Central, East, and West. Oh, you yes, in the future. Right? I'm telling you, the Leafs can have <laughs> what – they have what it takes to compete for the Stanley Cup. That You know what? Again, I'm going to repeat myself. It's great to see McDavid do what he's doing. However – could he do – would he Would he have gotten these points prior to this cold? So, so, so you're, you're questioning the divisional alignment if he's, if he's playing the Eastern teams. Absolutely. Okay. So, so right. let's – A guy like that, that is going to figure Matthews out – have 40 right now. Listen. No, yeah, no. That, yeah, that's the yeah. same thing, Frank. Because well, Matthews you know, have 40 then. Right, right. He would have 50 if it was pre-COVID in my aunt mind. Right? Why? Because the, the, the listen. The what league, are you drinking over there? The jungle juice or what? No, 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 no. McDavid, right? Yeah, he's he's a overall one of the best players today, right? If not the best player, I have yeah. to admit. However, right, pre-COVID, if it was the regular NHL season, do I see him doing what he's doing? Absolutely not. Why? Because he figures out teams, right? He figures out the weaknesses, right? Him and his teammates, right? So they're all go, 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 right? Who knows? They would have probably missed the playoffs if it was the regular, if it was the regular NHL pre-COVID. Yeah, but that's – we're not talking, even talking about that, though. You're talking we're, – we're, I, I understand where you're coming from. The, the schedule is a lot tougher. So are you saying the Oilers don't make the playoffs? That's what you're probably saying, right? Yeah, 100%. Right. Okay. So these hundred well, points you, are meaning. Do you think? Do you think the Leafs would be in the running for a President's Trophy? Listen. What's that? Do you think the Leafs would be in the running for a President's Trophy pre? -COVID? No, I don't. Okay. Well, at least you're. No. At, least, <laughs> at least you're honest there. No. Yeah. No. No. Okay. No. So, no. so guys, let me run a few numbers uh, for you guys right now. So fastest to hundred points since 1991. We have Connor McDavid in 53 games, hundred points. Saturday night was unbelievable. Um, way to go, Connor. Um, Jaeger in 95-96, it took him 52 games to get to 100 points. In 90-91, the jersey behind me, Mr. Wayne Gretzky, the great one, he got 100 points in 50 games. And then my boy, Soissant Cis, number Mario. 66, Mario Lemieux, 95 96, 38 games, 100 points. In 1993, Mario Lemieux, 38 games, 100 points. So um, McDavid's in a, a fine class now with Mario, Wayne, Jagger, and then you have Connor McDavid. Okay, boys, let's turn it over to Austin Matthews. I see uh, Julian. On the comments here, he said, I'll trade Matthews for McDavid any day, any time, wouldn't blink. So, so Julian, I know, is a big-time Leaf fan, uh, blue and white, and he's already driving Austin Matthews to Pearson Airport for Connor McDavid. So thoughts on Austin Matthews, Frank? Austin Matthews, with the team that they have today, you can't you can't go wrong, right? Uh, I wouldn't trade McDavid um, like uh, Julian. What he said, right? For uh, for Austin Matthews, 
Um, but uh, the reason being in my mind is because of the fact that, listen, you build your team w with, with key players, right? I don't think McDavid would do well in Toronto with the team that's there right now. Right. Really? I think, yeah. I think, I, I think I, I'm no. going to, I'm going to argue I, that point, Frank. I think I think I have a better year in Toronto. Yeah, I, I think, I think he has no more way. weapons in Toronto. I think, I think he has a better chance of winning a cup in Toronto than he does in Edmonton. Um, they're a deeper team in Toronto than they are in Edmonton. So hundred uh, percent, but I don't think McDavid would, let's say get his hundred points. Right. With the Leafs? With the Leafs. I think he gets way more with Mitch Marner. No way, man. Time. No way. Frank, what, no are you, way. what are you drinking over there? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. I'm Vic, serious. Vic. Right? I wouldn't do it. Okay, no so, so – I'm happy Austin. with Matthews. Okay. Matthew, Austin Matthews is a uh, is going to be captain for the Leafs one day, right? Obviously, we know. Listen, the only captain leads. Austin Matthews is going to be for is the Arizona, Arizona Coyotes Coyote. Coyote. four years maybe, from maybe, now. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe his last year of an NHL, right, member. Where, right, where, but, yeah. Okay, as a, a in his last NHL season. But he's a leafer, right, yeah. for, for, for a very long time, right? He's going to be better than Matt Sundin, right, better than Rick Vive. Better than Doug Gilmore, better than Wendell Clark. He's here for a long time. Okay. Well, right? listen, you know what? He is. I'm going to, when I compare McDavid to Matthews or Matthews to McDavid, Matthews' physicality of a hockey player, bigger demeanor. He has a different game. He has one of the not, if not the best shot in the NHL right now. He is a phenomenal hockey player. I do say he's growing every year. He will probably go down maybe as the best Leaf ever. If he continues to play with 100%. the Leafs, um, Vic, your thoughts on Matthews? Oh, I agree. He's, he's going to be a he should he's going to be a fifty goal scorer. He should be consistently. Um, but again, going back to Frank saying, you know, this division, yeah, he had an he had an easy time this year. Uh, I think well, McDavid did, did too, right? You, you got to remember, you're playing you're playing twenty percent of your games of a regular season against the same team. Nine, whatever, eight, nine games against the same team. Yeah. It's pretty easy to dissect a defense and get to know tendencies once you've played a team so many times, right? Now, sure. the argument can be made that, well, the defense can figure out the offense, but not when you have a guy like Matthews or McDavid. Mm -hmm. There is – you – tell me the – who the – I don't think any of the North Division teams have a legitimate number one stud defenseman. That could actually shut down either one of those guys. How about I throw this to you, Vic, too, as well? Name one team in the North Division that has a number one solidified goalie. Goalie, okay. exactly. Carey Price, but still he's been off his game. Besides Carey Price, who else do you see legitimately? Hallebuck. Well, you I'm have not a, he was an MVP uh, last year. I get but. it, but you know what? I think he's overrated. I think that Jets team is overrated, but we'll get to that. Um, but you're right. You know, who who – who on the back end is that, you know, um, strong, heavy defenseman like a Victor Hedman in the East or, sorry, in well, the Eastern Conference? Um, I don't I don't see any defenseman That's, like that. No, in the I don't see any yeah. number one defenseman out there that can shut them down come playoff time right. or even during this whole season. Right. So, like I said, the North Division had their weakness, a big weakness, like, mm -hmm. like you said, goaltending, uh, mm -hmm. their defense. So, yeah, it was pretty easy for them to put up points. Not, not saying that they wouldn't put up their points in a regular season, but you know what scoring with the ease that they're, that they do, you know, I, you look at, there's no travel, there's no West coast trips, mm -hmm. there's no fatigue, there's no back to backs, you know, road and home. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's a weird schedule. It's, it's favorable to, right. to scores like that. Yeah. I, I definitely, you know, um, so if it was that easy, sorry to pipe up here. Yeah, Nick. no, you can pipe up. Go ahead. Okay, but if it was that easy, Vic, why are your Flyers are not in this game? Why aren't they in the playoffs? The playoffs. They stay well, for We're, we're, we're hey, gonna get. We're, we're gonna get. In, we're, we're gonna get why? into. We're gonna get hey, into that. We're gonna get. If it was that easy, <laughs> we're, why? We're, 
we're, we're going to get into that in a second here. We're, that's, that is our next topic. But I'm going to throw out one more question about these two gentlemen, Connor McDavid and Austin Matthews. Will Connor McDavid, like Vic said, go down as the most elite offensive player the NHL has ever seen without a Stanley Cup? Or will Austin Matthews, yeah, or or with Austin Matthews, who will have more cups at the end of the career? Um, I just want to address one one thing that I see by Lucas. He said McDavid would much rather have Drysaddle than Miner than Marner. Um, I don't know, hard hard to say, but let me let me ask you the question, guys. Who will have more cups at the end of their career, Matthews or McDavid? Matthews. I think it'll be tied at zeros. <laughs> <laughs> Typical flyer fan, eh? <laughs> hey, Look, listen, hold on. Been, Edmonton's been trying to build a team for how many years? That's what I mean, and they still right? can't get it right. No, the I Leafs. We no, they gave them the red the carpet. They, they, Edmonton has had so many red carpets, yeah, right, yeah. to lead them to the Stanley Cup with all these first rounders, all this prom, all this talent. Yeah. Doesn't happen. Never happened. Yeah. Right? I honestly don't see either one of them winning a cup where they are. I think you're wrong. The Leafs will win the cup. Oh, you can think that. It's fine. <laughs> hey, right. hey, this is what the lounge is about. Everybody can have their own opinion. But yeah. let, let me remind you both. What do you what do you say, Nick? Well, I I think um I think Austin Matthews has a better chance winning yeah. as a Toronto Maple Leaf Absolutely. than Connor McDavid with the Oilers. But I do see that um, depending on what the Oilers, Oilers do the next couple of years, does Connor stay? Um, if I'm a Leaf fan, I want to tie up Matthews to a longer, get an extension in there, and keep him in Leafland for at least you know 10, 10 more years. So I do, I do think that uh, you know um, the Leafs have a better opportunity right now as a franchise to win. But let me remind all Leaf Nation out there: it's been since 1967. 54 years in the making. And now we're going to get to the biggest question of the night for Vic. 1975. Hmm. Philadelphia Flyers. They haven't seen a cup since then. They had a great bubble playoff. Um, we had many conversations last summer via text about the Philadelphia Flyers, the way they looked, their young players coming in the organization. Um, Carter Hart. Everybody thought maybe he was the next Carey Price. Okay, a lot of comparisons there last summer. What happened in Philly with the high expectations? No Stanley Cup playoffs this year. They still have some youth in their organization with Joel Farabee, this Wilson kid that just came up and he's starting to light the lamp. They got Frost in the organization. I don't know why he hasn't been in the in the lineup. I believe he was hurt. He's hurt, uh, yeah. Um, but uh, what happened in Philly? Uh, I th well... I think it all started in the bubble, to tell you the truth. Uh, and I think I think Vino, I don't think Vino's the guy for the job there. I'm I'm not a fan. Mm -hmm. Um I think um uh, it started with um like I said, they barely stuck by Montreal, um, where they sh probably shouldn't have. They took the Islanders to seven games, uh, a couple of you know, lucky wins there. But he was just you know, you're going into games, important games, you know, crunch time, last 10 minutes of period, and Vino's consistently, you know, stubborn, rolling four lines. Um, you know, guys like Nate Thompson last year and uh, who was it, uh, Derek Grant, mm -hmm. seeing power play time. Like, I just – I don't think he – I think he I think he pissed off a few of the guys on the team. Uh, he had Farabee and Van Reems like in and out of the lineup there. So I think it all started there. I think he started to lose the room there. He may not have lost the room completely, but I think he may have lost some of the guys in the room. Um, he, you know, well, I don't know if I remember it was the beginning of this season. Um, he made, he questioned Carter Hart's uh, efforts. Yeah, yeah. You know, you got a young goalie, uh, his second year, first full real full season yeah. and you're, you're throwing your goalie under the bus. Who's a kid. Right. Uh, now he's kind of lacking confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, they started out, we started out pretty good. Well, yeah, decently. I think they started like 
seven and three. Yeah, this month yep. this season. Yeah. Um. Then, you know, there. I, I was watching the presser with uh, Vino and Fletcher yesterday, and they're blaming it on the COVID break. Mm. And you know, yeah, okay, fine, Danny. They they did after they what, had a week off from uh, postponing postponed games and COVID. They came back struggling. So I think that may have had a part of it. Um, the con- the condensed schedule after that, yeah. you know, and you got you got Carter Hart who's struggling. Now you have Brian Elliott as your backup. Yeah, you know, uh, Brian Elliott. You know, he he did he did his job. Yeah, but you know, again with a condensed schedule, he's an older goalie. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to get run down, right? So, so let me let me let me ask you, Vic, um, about the leadership of the Philadelphia Flyers: uh, Claude Giroux, Jacob Voracek, uh, Jean Couturier. Um, those three gentlemen. Um, do you think it's time for them to take a different direction uh, with Claude Giroux, Voracek? They've been there for a number of years, and you know Claude Giroux at one point um, he was called on Coach's Corner the best player in the world. Um, I still think he's a good player. I um, I've, I've, I've always liked Claude Giroux. Um, Jacob Voracek's always been a presence out there. But do you think it's maybe time for a change of the guard um, and go with maybe a younger, younger, faster team? Yeah. Um, so I was going to, that was going to be my next, one of my next points was I, Giroux, he had a great season. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just, I don't think he's fit to be the leader of that team. You know, he leads by example on the ice. I just don't see him the type of guy to take control of a room. Mm. But, hey, listen, we're all outsiders. We don't know what goes on behind closed doors. It's just, just a feeling I get. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think I think Voracek, I think his time is, you know, time to move that, move that, move on from that and get some, uh, get some youth in there, get some more youth. Um, their youth was another problem this year. You know, they look, their defense looked great last year. Um, I think they all took a step back. They all were like all their young players pretty much regressed this year, other than Farabee. Right. And their defense, you know, Provorov was playing a lot of minutes. Maybe that caught up to him. The loss of Niskanen. Hmm. Niskanen was a huge loss. Yeah. As much as I hated Niskanen when he was in Pittsburgh, <laughs> and he was a pain in the ass to play against. Yeah. He he solidified that top pair. Like he he was a mentor to to Provorov. Yeah, and that that was a huge loss. Yeah, um, their their power play uh, struggled. Their PK was like thirtieth or thirty first in the league this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, I think they need to add another defenseman, mm-hmm. a number one defenseman. So turn a Voracek or someone you know into that. Um, you need a goalie to back up Carter. I think. Well, Elliot's I think is done. I think he's an RFA. Yeah, I think I think he's or gonna, UFA. Sorry, UFA. He might even call it a career. Um, yeah, but again, you know, Frank, I know that you're just waiting in the wings about Philly, and we're just going to move on from Philly now. But um, you know, uh, my final thoughts on Philadelphia is I think they still have some good youth in their in their organization. I agree. Um, I, I do think though that a coaching change is necessary there. I, I'm not a yeah. big fan of the bench with Mike Yao. I think, you know, I'm not crazy about him. Michelle Therrion, we all know about his antics. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, I, you I know like, him well. I, I know him well. And I think that in terms of, uh, um, and I'll give you a little bit of a story very quickly for viewers out there about Michael Therrion. In the Stanley Cup run in 20, in 2008, this guy here was drinking Red Bull and smoking darts in the hallway in the igloo. So he is one of those wired coaches that will call you out, that will embarrass you. So you know how the players are now. They're a little fluffy. They get their hurt, their feelings hurt pretty fast, right, because they make their 7 or $8 million now when they score 10 goals a year. So – um, I'm not sure if he's a dinosaur in the league now, but I do think the Flyers have a bright future with a lot of their offensive players up front. Frank, just a quick comment on your thoughts on the Flyers. 100%. Uh, I'm with Nick when it comes down to coaching staff and goaltending for me, right? The way I see it, right? Um, I believe 
Uh, the yeah, youth. But you know what? It's it's sorry. It's easy for everyone to say because it's the Flyers. It's goaltending. It's always <laughs> that's everyone's first thing. Right. Well, no. you know Carter Hart. Carter Hart is going to be a fantastic goalie. In this I league. agree. You got to remember, he's what twenty. Yeah, yeah. Twenty one. Yeah. yeah. His second his second season. Right. He need he needs a mentor back there. Hundred percent. He, he need he can't have a coach that's going to throw him under the bus. So, right. Sorry. He, and go ahead. He go ahead, Frank. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just see. Uh, um, from, uh, I guess, uh, leading to the next segment, I guess uh, uh, you would have to say that, yeah, the Flyers would need maybe uh, to see if they can manage to get like a, like a Mark Andre Fleury back. There. Right, hundred percent. Right. right? right. Yeah. You know, in my yep. mind, right yep. to 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 show him the ways. Let's say, right. For sure. For sure. But but um, coaching staff definitely. Yeah. Right. They they. Everything has to be rebuilt. Yeah, I was never a fan of AV. So. Yeah, yeah. He's just he's that old school type of coach, right? And I don't think they they don't uh, seem to work anymore these days in the in this league. Right, right. Um, he pissed off a lot of guys, I think. For you sure. Know, like, you got a guy like JVR who's you signed to uh, seven million a year, or whatever it was, and he was in and out of the lineup in the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> For I sure. Think, and I think a lot of guys were pissed off that he called out Carter Hart. Yeah. Or, yeah. Right. Yeah. You got to walk the line properly with, with coaching. Now you don't want to, like I said, rock the boat too much, but I do think this before we move on to the next topic here. And my favorite topic of the show will be the NHL Stanley cup playoffs starting on Saturday. The whole schedule hasn't been released yet, but we do know that the Boston Bruins and the Washington Capitals will be playing Saturday night at 7 PM in terms of the flyers. I do think, and I am going to tell you everybody today on May 12th, at uh, 1021 that the Flyers will be in the postseason next year. You can bank on that yeah. with a regular I schedule. I see that happening. Okay. So best part of the show. All right. Everybody's waiting for, you know, I think um, in Frank. Torts. No, yeah. no. What's that? Someone What's said that? bring in torts. No, bring in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just saw it. <laughs> bring in torts. Hey, 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 teeps. Why don't they bring in me? Right, I'll give him a nice speech. Hey, you, you know me, about, tapes. You know, you know who I'll take. Who's that? Bring and talk it. Hey, 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 right, hey. hey. Per right, eh? per perfect fit, man. Yeah, that's a perfect fit. Yeah. But, yeah. but but hold, slow your horses down there. If the Penguins get knocked out first round, like Sullivan out later, and yeah. ninety two comes back to the black and gold, or so, does he go to his roots? Or, oh, or does he go to his roots? Scarborough, Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Stanley Cup playoffs, uh, playoff predictions. All right, gents. We're going to start off with the West Division. Okay. And um, with the West Division, there are still, I believe, a couple spots or there's a little bit of a, a tangle there, Vic, we were talking about. Yeah, I think the top spot is up for grabs still. Right? I think if Colorado wins out the next two, they get the presidents, I believe. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Well, so Colorado yep. could be facing St. Louis. Right. So the reason why I wanted to start with the West Division tonight, because we'll talk about a couple scenarios. We'll 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 pick some winners out of there. So right now you have the 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 Knights are on top, but like Vic said, if they win the next couple games, they'll be at 82 points. Okay. Um, and then in terms of uh uh, Colorado, sorry, Colorado will have 82 Vegas will have 80 and you'll have the Vegas Knights. So I'm going to give you two scenarios. We're going to look at this right now. Vegas versus St. Louis. Vic, who takes that series? Oh, no chance for St. Louis. Okay. So you're picking Vegas. Yeah. Vic, Vegas over St. Louis. Frank. Frank. Yeah. Frank. Yeah. Frank. Yeah. 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 Vegas. hundred percent. Frank, Frank's Frank's watching watching the comments down low. He's laughing at those comments. Eh? I just He's watching the like, Leafs. Uh, is he watching the Leafs? Oh, there no, you no, go. No. Right, right. Okay. All right. Hey, you know what? I think Frank's going to go for a little nap. We'll be back for a commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So then, so then we have uh, we'll have let's say the Avalanche against the Wild. And last night I, I had my podcast Pens and Pucks. Um, and I picked a team here, and I surprised. I got really throttle boxed on the comment section. Gents, who do you think wins between Colorado and Mini? 
Who's going first? I'll go first. Colorado. Right. Okay, Colorado. Uh, I'm going to say Colorado. Okay. Uh, but I think it's it's going to go seven if it's been against Minnesota. Okay. Uh, Minnesota could surprise, though. Um, but right. I, I still think Colorado in seven. Colorado in seven. All right. So I have if, if the Vegas Knights are playing the Blues, I'm taking Vegas. And if the uh, Avalanche play the Wild, I am taking the Minnesota Wild in seven. Uh, that is my one of my shocker picks. I like I like the Wild. I think they're on a groove. I think they have an excellent rookie. Um, I like the way they're coached. I think they have a good structure. So the Wild, I'm taking there. Now, if roles are reversed, again, I think it's pretty easy to say. We have Vegas and Wild, and we have the Avalanche and Blues. Vic, Avalanche and Blues. Uh, Avalanche. Avalanche. Frankie boy. Avalanche. Avalanche. Okay, so Avalanche seems to be the taste of the night here with, <laughs> with this West Division. So I will still take the Wild. Okay. Uh, sorry, I will take the Avalanche against uh, the Blues, but I'm still I'm taking Vegas over the Wild if Vegas plays the Wild. Now, question: Who will take the West Division? Well, give me one team. Vegas. Vegas. Frankie has Vegas tonight. Yep. I got Vegas as well. You got Vegas as well. This is three in a row. I got Vegas as well. I think that their depth up front, their D, and their goaltending is far, far superior than a lot of the teams in the NHL for, and even being a uh, expansion team four Total years deep. Complete balance. Exactly, hundred percent. All right, the Central Division. I like to call it the Miami Vice Division. Okay. And why is that? And why is that? Because we're going to talk about the Florida Panthers and the Tampa Bay Lightning. The lotion series. A lot of hype. A lot of hype in that series. A lot of hype around that series. Right, right. I remember, I think, um, you know, uh, we went to Cancun one year, Frankie boy, and uh, I think one of our one of our, our friends brought out that suntan lotion that had no number, and uh, he actually turned out to be as red as this shirt. <laughs> so um, we're going to call it the no number series as well for suntan lotion florida and tampa bay vic oof i'm i'm i've been <laughs> torn on this i have been torn on this all day long um florida florida's uh been one of the top teams in the league and they look they look really good my uh my question is you know does Bobrovsky take them past tampa I don't know. Tampa's question mark. Stamco's coming back. Hedman coming back from injury. Or Kucherov, sorry. Or, or actually all three of them, right? All three of them, yeah. yeah. All three, yeah. Um, how will they fare? I'm, I'm still thinking Tampa. Okay, Tampa. I think Tampa will take Florida in seven. I, uh, Nick, I think uh, Florida in six. Florida, Florida in six. Wow. Yeah. There's, there's the upset. There's the upset. Yeah. I'm going to take Tampa. I think, I still think with their veteran leadership coming off a cup run, they yeah. have the best goalie in that division with Vasilevsky. You look at, he'll probably win another Vesna. You have another probably Norris in Hedman's back pocket. So, um, but I do like your pick with Florida. Vic made a good point. Florida has been consistent since day one. As soon as the puck dropped in 2021, they were on fire. And also, too, um, one of the things I look at, gents, with the Florida Panthers is Joel Quinville. Great yeah. coach. He's won cups before. Um, and Barkoff and Huberto have been playing great. But, Vic, I'll ask you one question. I'll ask Frank this one question as well. When it comes to their goaltending, you have Barboski and you have this kid, Drager or Dreger, yeah. Drager, that's, that's come out here. Um, can both of them, you know, carry that load and beat Vasilevsky? What are your thoughts? <laughs> Uh, no, and that's why I'm picking. I got Tampa as the difference in the series. I think, like you said, Vasil, it'll come down to Vasilevsky um, having to win it for them. So, um, you know, Bobrovsky, he can go on a heater for sure, mm -hmm. but the other kids been playing well as also. So, like, I, I'm assuming they're gonna start Bobrovsky, right? 
but I still give the edge to Vasilevsky. Yeah. Frank? I'll give the uh, edge to Berberovsky because, I mean, uh, Florida, in my mind, has come on this season strong. I think they uh, finished the year last year on a solid note. I think they they they, they, they carried it over. Right? Yeah. So they improved their game a lot. That's why I'm – I think uh, I'm call it an upset to Tampa, right? But I think uh, it's ten, uh, or, uh, Florida will be uh, winning the series in six. I think it's going to come down to see how how good of a start you know Stamkos and uh, Kucherov have in right. that series. Right, right. You know, if they start out slow and they get down, they get behind the eight ball first couple of games, and you know we got a different story. For sure, so for sure, it's a tight one to call. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And then we have uh, Carolina and Nashville. Um, uh, your thoughts on that? Who's coming out, Carolina or Nashville? Pick. Uh, Carolina. Carolina. Frank? Nashville. Another heater. Another, this yeah. guy's throwing heat balls yeah, over no. here today, right? Hey, write it down. Write underdog it down. Underdog Frankie, underdog. Write it, underdog. Write it okay. down. Okay, I'm writing it down. Nashville. Yes, okay. Sir. All right, so you're thinking Nashville. I'm picking Carolina. Um, I, 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 I want to agree with you, Frank. Nashville's been on such a heater. They're, they're rocking it. They're winning. They've been hot. Lately. They've yeah. been hot. They're going to go into yeah. the playoffs hot, but let me remind, matters. right. Let me, but let me remind everybody out there that once that puck drops Saturday night, everything you did in the regular season goes out the window. It's a new season. So you never know what's going to happen, but I got Carolina. Frank's got Nashville. Okay. Gents, who's coming out of that division? Who is coming out of the central division? Carolina. Carolina. Wow. Okay. Tampa's gone. Frank. Nashville. Nashville. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> hey, you guys laugh. Uh, I was just laughing at Nick's face. <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> Reaction. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey, Vic, oh. you look like you're dry there, right? You know what? I hey, Cheers. But <laughs> – Wow. Not Nashville. Okay, so hold on a sec. I think Frank, are you into like country music now? Like you're watching no, country no, music no. awards, like like my you wife. Grand old yeah, Opry. Yeah, right. No, you no. know, like this country stuff, right? I, I Nick, I'll be honest with you. Like, yeah. yeah, I get your point. When it they 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 start the playoffs, they drop the puck, whatever you did in the season. Yeah. I kind of disagree on that because it does carry over, mm. right? The confidence, right? Uh, is a big factor in the yeah, getting hot at the right time, 100. Sure. And this, I, I think they're going to be going out of that central, yeah. You they're know what? Be on like, top. They're probably playing the best hockey that they've played 100. There's punishment happening there, right? The, you right know, in that division, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. And I think uh, uh, Nashville can take the uh, bumps and bruises all the way, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're 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 really on a on a hot streak on a heater. Um, so you have Nashville coming out. Frank yep. has Carolina coming out of the central, and I have the Tampa Bay Lighting. Vic, Vic Scott, Vic, Vic Scott, Carolina. He's yeah, got he's Carolina. I got Nashville. Carolina. Yeah, sorry, Frank's got Nashville. Yeah. Vic's got yeah. Carolina, and I have the Tampa Bay Lightning. Okay, so wow. so we got three different uh, opinions here, but that's what the lounge is all about. That's what I love about hockey. We can always talk and have different debates on different teams and who's coming out each division. The East Division. Yeah. We have um, a couple battles in there. We have the Penguins versus the Islanders. And then we have the Capitals versus the Bruins. I think that series is going to be pretty gritty. Um, it's going to be a survivor series. So let's start off with Pittsburgh and the Islanders. Vic. Uh, Penguins for me. I think right. uh, yeah, the Islanders have been too inconsistent um, the last little while for sure. Again, regular season means nothing, but mm -hmm. I, I just I can't see them beating the Penguins. Yeah, I have to go with the Penguins, even though they, you know, I, I'm a little bit biased, but I think just the uh, the <clears> loss <throat> of uh, their captain Lee, um, their their goal scoring, their lack of. I don't think their goalies are Valarmov and Sorokin are solidified back there. No. Um, I just think Pittsburgh has too much firepower, so I'm picking the Penguins. Frank, who yeah, are you picking? I agree 100 percent with you guys when it comes down to. Uh, it's going to be Pittsburgh. And I wouldn't be surprised if they went four straight. 
Well, we'll see about that. It's, I, I still think with a Barry Trotz coach team. Yeah, it's gonna be an. Uh, it's not gonna be an easy series. It's not gonna be an easy series. They they're they're very very <laughs> snarly on the back end. So you know what? Even being a Penguins fan, I'm still worried about the Islanders. So the series that everybody's talking about, especially in the East and in the U.S. market, is Ovi versus the Bruins. Um, so, gents, I think there's a lot of different conversations here. But who do you guys have in that series? Uh, I, I got the Bruins. Frank, I think, uh, hey, so I'm go going with Vic. the Bruins. Go ahead, Vic. Sorry, no, you I, say I, about the Bruins? I think uh, I think I think you know, the difference will be goaltending there. All right, uh, Rask. You know, well, I think Rask has something to prove. All right, so I'm 100 percent there. I'm going with Boston. I do think out of the four teams, Rask is the best goalie out of those four. So Boston is always dangerous, and Rask is on his top of his game. And they have one of the best two way centers in the world, and the one Trace. of the best lines. The perfection line is unbelievable when they get rolling. Watch and now you got Taylor Hall out. in the mix. Exactly that second line with Smith, Hall, and Krejci. They're not only a one-line team, they're a two-line team now. Yeah. So we got the Penguins. We got the I'm – picking, I'm picking the Bruins, okay? So we have uh, the Bruins in favor here, all three of us? Yep. yep. All right. So who's coming out of the East Division? Pittsburgh or Boston? Next Boston. Like my answer. <laughs> I can, I'm still going to go with the Bruins. Yeah. Same yep. here. Yeah. And you know what? Me being a Penguins fan – uh, you know, I, I have to save this, but um, I'm going to save my pick, boys, because, uh, you know, I have to announce my pick on pens and pucks uh, on the weekend. But I'm going to be a spoiler, and I know that Jordan's going to kill me, but I am picking the Boston Bruins to beat the Pittsburgh Penguins. There and that's not, that's not because, you know what, I'm not a Penguins fan, but reality is when you have Tuka Rask between the pipes, he is a game changer. So I'm picking the Bruins. Okay, gents, so we've picked the divisions. We're getting to the north now, the Jabroni division. You know, Frank Frank, Frank okay. has his Frank has his uh, champagne ready there. I yeah. think, you know, it's just beside him. He's, he's, he's planning the parade, right? Elliot Friedman just tweeted, Frankie's picking the Leafs to win the cup the next three years. So, <laughs> okay, so we got uh, the Leafs and the Habs, the battle of the original six. Frank? Yeah, Leafs and four. <laughs> we didn't ask how many games, Frank. <laughs> I'm telling you, put it down. Leafs and four. Okay. Uh, I think if you would have asked uh, a couple of Leaf fans, I think I think, uh, I think Julian, um, uh, if he's still around, he'd probably say Leafs and three. Um, but uh, <laughs> you know how Leaf fans are, Vic, yeah. right? Yeah. Leafs and two, Leafs and three. Uh, Vic, Leafs or, or, or Habs? Uh, Leafs. Well, I'm going to say Leafs and six. Leafs and six. You want to okay. go with games, Frank? Leafs. Say Leafs and six. Yeah, if we're going to talk about games, I'm going to take Leafs in five. So, Frank, you'll have a smile on your face when you go to bed tonight. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, 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 the butts are coming. Uh, Edmonton and Winnipeg. Frank. Oops. Edmonton. Okay. You want to know games? Winnipeg. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, wow! Look, look at that, eh? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Somebody just walked through the door. About, hey, Vic, all that good stuff that you sent about uh, said about McDavid out the window. Why? Hey, yeah, you're going with Winnipeg, dude. Hey, dude, you praise one hey. one player doesn't win that series. <laughs> hey, one player doesn't win that series. Well, according to you. What you said before? What are you doing? Was he taping your ankles? <laughs> He's gonna give you a slew foot, Vic. Watch out! Hey, I forgot to put this up. Hey, I oh, forgot. Go. He's got. Uh, uh, there, uh, no. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> hey, why don't you? Why don't you? Why don't you, why don't you take that off the wall? Hey Frank, take that off the wall and just bring it up to the camera, oh. just, just to show the viewers out there. This is a famous picture from the 2000s, I believe. This picture will never uh, die. This picture will never go away. Now, if you want to order a T-shirt, subscribe to the Hockey Lounge <laughs> and follow us on Instagram, the oh, Hockey man. Lounge, to get a Victor Leaf T-shirt. Son of a bitch! <laughs> you bleed blue, buddy. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that, that picture's got to die somewhere, man. Hey, hey, I'm hey, coming hey. by our house in the middle of the night. <laughs> okay, anyway, so, okay, yeah, Jets. Winnipeg. So, Winnipeg. Winnipeg, eh? Wow. Winnipeg. Frank's taking the Oilers. Yeah. I'm, I'm taking the Oilers, too. Okay. The big Why? question. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, eh? Yeah, no, you're not, you don't have to say sorry. Yeah, yeah. Vic, why Winnipeg, man? Uh, a big, bigger, stronger team. Yeah. Uh, Hellebuck. Uh, he's been playing. He played. He's been playing okay the last little bit. I Are think, you thinking uh, because the difference is goaltending? I'm just no, curious. No, no. I I think Winnipeg's deeper. You know, really. Edmonton, yeah, Edmonton. Winnipeg can focus on shutting down one line. You know, Paul Maurice can shut that one line down. Yeah, in my point. opinion. Um. Again, the Oilers have they have no depth, and Winnipeg. If Hellebuck turn comes into MVP form, a I, I think they win this division. Yeah. So you, uh, yeah. Okay. So the so, Bois, the Bois. You know their depth. I don't. I'm not a big fan of their D, but Vic, you make a good point there with Hellebuck. You know he he should be able to outplay Mike Smith in the net. So yeah. You know, Smith and like, has played well. Smith yeah. has played well for them this year, for sure. For sure, yeah, yeah. 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 But they yeah. don't have they don't have the defense, defensive depth, right. or up front depth right. to. Uh, right. But again, we'll see. It didn't happen, right? You got it. You got it. Okay, so then we have you know the two the two hockey players, the two gents we talked about in the beginning of the show. We talked about Austin Matthews and Connor McDavid, right? Um, so uh, who is going to be coming out of the North Division? Jets. Jets. J E T S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Vic's picking the Jets. Yeah. Frankie's taking his cap off. He's saying <laughs> T M L. Is that Lovat Leafs or is that the Toronto Maple Leafs? <laughs> yeah, Lovat Leafs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or or is that is that the Archibald Leafs? Because uh, you know what? You know, uh, Lenny and Piero that are probably watching, or maybe they're in bed right now because it's late for them. Um you know, maybe it could be the Archibald Leafs. I think Vic, we won a couple of championships with them. I think, right? Maybe one or t I think we won yeah. one. No, I don't right? remember. Yeah, who, at York University, right? So could maybe be. who knows? Who knows? But okay, so Frank, that shirt looks a little tight on you, by the way. Yeah, oh, but he's he, think, he's been he's been working I, out. He's been I working think, out. I think COVID's got you down, eh? <laughs> yeah. So so okay so we got large, buddy. we got we what got are you XL X XL in the pants buddy in the pants hey hey Piero Piero just texted me now he said he's watching so Piero yeah are you having some beers or milk and cookies buddy uh, where the hell's Lenny where we're we're, Lenny? we're 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 missing Lenny but I think he's training in his garage getting ready to get the call from Dubas just in case there's a heater with. The three goaltenders, but okay. So we got the Maple Leafs. Frank has picked the Leafs. Vic, you picked the Jets to come out of the North. Yeah. All right. Good. 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 And I'm picking, and this I'm going on a limb on this one. I'm picking Connor McDavid to come out All of the right. North and the Edmonton Oilers. I think he's on a mission, but that's my opinion. And again, yeah. we'll we'll see what happens. So last question of the night before we close the lounge, and again. If you want to be a member of the lounge, please hit the subscribe button and follow us on Instagram. We're going to be having weekly podcasts, weekly guests, just having fun on the lounge like we are tonight. <clears throat> Vic, who is your Stanley Cup winner of 2021? The not so expansion Golden Knights. Jackpot. <laughs> Frank, like you and Nick, I'm a I'm a Leaf fan, but the games I watched when it comes down to the Vegas Knights, I'm gonna have to give it to them this year. Right? Wow! Yeah, and clean sweep. There's no competition. Clean the, sweep, Nick. All all all, all around uh, team, uh, big factor from goaltending, defense. Their, their pressure, their power play, their I mean, PK, right? Um, they're, 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 it's, it's their you year. Two, you got two number one goalies there. Yeah. Well, 100%. One and one A. Leonard, one. I give 
you know, at the flurry, obviously the yeah. edge, but yeah. you know, yeah. you got two guys capable of taking the net there. Hundred percent. So, right. so yeah. I, I, I have the Vegas Knights as well, guys. So clean sweep, clean sweep, just like the Leafs against Montreal in two Ooh. straight. Right, Leafs in two. Leafs in two. So we got the Vegas Knights winning. All three of us have agreed to the Vegas Knights winning the 2021 Stanley Cup in COVID this COVID, Cup. the COVID Cup in this pandemic shortened season of 56 games. Frank Vic, it's been a blast tonight. Thank you for awesome, being the buddy. first guest on the Hockey Lounge. Really enjoyed you guys on the lounge. Anytime you guys want to come in, it's been yeah, great. Man. Thank it's you. Great. No, thank Thanks you guys. Awesome. So remember, if you want to be a part of the lounge and a member, hit subscribe. Follow us on Instagram, The Hockey Lounge. Everybody enjoy the Stanley Cup playoffs. We'll see you next week. The puck drops 7 p.m. on Saturday. I'm your host, Nick. Stay safe, love hockey, and cheers. Cheers. Yogi. Hey, there it is. <laughs>